Hi, welcome to Teen Pride Book Talk. My name is Lucy and this is the program on AADL TV where each episode I take a few minutes to tell you about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA plus community. I'm really excited to share the book that I picked out for this episode. It's a book that I've been looking forward to reading ever since I heard that it was being written. It is called Anne of Greenville and is by Mariko Tamaki. And this story is a reimagining of the classic Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery, which was written in 1908. So a long time ago, but has remained a book that uh, people have turned to and read. And in large part, I think that that is because of the character Anne Shirley in Anne of Green Gables. She is a young girl who's adopted by a family and she is a girl with spunk, with imagination. She stands up for herself. She's defiant. She gets into little fights, just characteristics that were not typical of a girl at that time, but really representative of someone who was standing up for themselves and who was unapologetically them. And the Anne that Tomiko has created in Anne of Greenville very much has that same spunk, that same heart, that same imagination as the original Anne Shirley, but this time she is a queer, BIPOC, disco-obsessed high school student. She was adopted by her two moms, Millie and Lucy. Anne is Japanese-American and she is queer. Her mom's names, just as a side note, Lucy and Millie reflect the Lucy and Maud of Lucy Maud Montgomery's name. Lucy, Millie, and Anne have moved to Greenville because her mom, Lucy, is going to be the new vice principal at the high school there. Anne and her mothers have lived all over the place. They've moved a lot because of Lucy's job. Her mom, Millie, is an artist and can go anywhere and do her work. Greenville is a very small town. It's not a real town, but it's representative of sort of small town America. Anne is the only Japanese American in the town, the only Asian American person in the town. And there are not many queer people in the town either. So already Anne stands out for being the girl with two mothers. She's going to the high school where one of her moms is the vice principal. And then Anne is herself in so many ways, which we see right away. Greenville is populated in part by a group that is called the Forevers. These are people whose families have been in Greenville forever. And they are very devoted to the way that Greenville has existed. There is a group of these forevers at high school where Anne is going. And as you can imagine, they sort of run the school. They're the popular kids. They have the starring roles in the school productions. They are not very nice and they are not open-minded at all. They don't have any room in their lives for someone who is openly queer, who is a disco loving, roller skating, unique fashionista who is a self-proclaimed artistic genius. There's just no space for someone like Anne. The thing about Anne in Anne of Greenville is that she will not change who she is and she does not apologize for who she is. I love that this author has retained that from the original book and the original character of Anne. This is a reimagining, so it's not an exact retelling. And I think that that's a wise choice as well on the author's part. It's difficult to do an exact retelling, especially for a classic book that has been read by so many and loved by so many. But it's also important to recognize that a book like Anne of Green Gables, which still lasts and is still read, could stand to have a character who is more reflective of high school students today and who more readers will see themselves in. And that is what this book has given us. So Anne does make one friend right away a girl named Barry. Barry's a loner. Barry is labeled as different. Barry doesn't abide by strict gender constructs. And Barry and Anne become really close right away. Anne also develops a crush on a girl named Gilly, who is part of the forever crowd, but sort of seems like maybe she could be nice to Anne. It's kind of questionable. So these forevers discriminate 
directly against Anne for being queer, for being Japanese American. It's behavior that they have learned from their parents. It's acceptable in their town and it is very much there. Anne's mother also has to work against this discrimination as a queer woman, even from people who work in the high school, even from the principal of the high school. The Forevers really work hard to exclude Anne from everything, and they do this by not making room for any change, and by using labels and using incendiary language to keep change from happening. So if there is a new show that's gonna happen and it's not the traditional R town, but in this case, Peter Pan, the Forevers immediately label this as part of a gay agenda that is created by Anne and her mother. Because Anne is cast as Peter Pan, they see this as a direct assault to gender norms, yet Peter Pan is usually played by a woman and has been historically in Broadway. Anne's mom, Lucy, is in a tough situation because she is the vice principal of the school. She would like to behave accordingly in order to keep her job, but she's also Anne's mom. And as such, she wants to stand up and defend Anne. Anne is very quick to react. She doesn't tolerate a lot of the behavior that is directed towards her. The way that she acts out is not correct. It's usually physical, but she is standing up for herself and she's not willing to change who she is. And it's important to her that there is a space made for her in this town and a space made for people like Barry and a space made for her mothers. It's impossible for Anne not to react. This does get her mom in some trouble as well. Anne is defiant, as I said before, she's a daydreamer. She loves the things that she loves and she is fiercely loyal. She loves her pets, her dog and cat. She loves her moms and she is loyal to the friends that she makes. She is also not easily persuaded at all by external pressures to change who she is. She's not gonna stop loving disco even if nobody else has heard of it. She sort of feels like, well, that's your loss that you don't know all this wonderful music from this era. She's not gonna stop roller skating around. She's not gonna stop dressing in her very unique and unusual way. She is able to have humor about who she is and she's a pretty funny character in general. There is a lot of humor in this book and it's extremely fun to read because it's full of disco, it's full of musicals, it's got these quirky characters in it. And in and of herself is the type of character like the original Anne Shirley that's just so easy to get behind and back and kind of just become enamored with when you're reading this book. But this book is more than a reimagining of the original Anne of Green Gables. It's more than just this story of one girl moving to a town where she doesn't fit in and she's treated horribly. It's not really the story of a whole town changing their ways to find a space for Anne. That certainly doesn't happen in some magical way, but it is the story of this girl who refuses to let the world change her. And it's a story about being true to yourself and helping the other people around you be true to themselves through your loyalty, through your support, and through just putting yourself out there. In Anne of Greenville, Anne has a lot of disco songs that are sort of anthems for her, but she sings at one point, Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive, and that is very emblematic of what Anne does when she arrives at a town like Greenville. If you have read the original Anne of Green Gables, and you are a fan, I think you will like this book, but you do not have to be familiar with that story at all to enjoy this book. So I highly, highly recommend Mariko Tamaki's Anne of Greenfell. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did.